I would start the discussion with ethics for management accountant. So, what are the ethical standards uh, that Institute of Management accountant expect from us? This is which we will study. Then we see what is the corporate ethics and what are the legislation already has been formed uh, related to the ethics, corporate responsibility for ethical behaviors and uh, then we will see what is fraud and the fraud risk model fraud triangle we will discuss then in the last we'll see what is uh, the fraud and error and how to address it and in the last we'll see about risk management so we'll start with ima uh, statement of uh, ethical professional standards uh, for us it's nothing new because when we were small our parents teach us you have to be fair, you have to be honest, you have to be disciplined, you have to maintain confidentiality. So in terms of ethics this is already you know most of the human beings knows but in order to get it aligned in a proper set of ethics uh, we are studying this. So he says that every IMA member should be honest, fair. When we say honest means uh, you should not uh, uh, take money, bribes and t change your opinion for uh, certain matters. Fairness, uh, you should be fair in your mental attitude. There should not be racism based on color, skin, gender, you know, any kind of discrimination will violate the fairness. Objectivity is, there are two words, one is subjectivity. If I say something is going to happen and you ask me how you feel, I will say these are my feelings. So feelings are subjective. It may be right and it may be wrong. So we follow on objectivity. That means that we have a rational facts and figure to express our opinion. So profession asks for an objectivity of information and responsibility. These are four uh, characteristics. Then we have four standards like competence, confidentiality, integrity and credibility. What is competence? That whatever we do the work, we should have required knowledge, skills and abilities for it. So far it is not uh, mentioned in the code that you are uh, CMA qualified, then you will be competent. There is nothing like this. You can be a competent person if you have a required knowledge, skills and abilities to perform your job. Then we have confidentiality it means we have access because we are management accountants so we have sensitive information we know that management is in trouble management is going up down you know these kind of things are in our knowledge so that comes in the confidentiality we have to maintain their confidentiality integrity is in our character we don't sell our opinion we are fair we are genuine and the credibility is that people can trust your reports, your judgments, your words. You have uh, keep yourself clean and you get the confidence of the market that you are a reliable and trustable person. That will create your credibility. So these are the, this is four principles, these are four standards. Then in a final section, he says the resolution of ethical conflict is especially significant. So suppose if you join a company tomorrow and you find that this company is involved in unethical practices. So what I am may suggest how to handle these kind of cases. So because I am new in the company, I don't know anyone. So first I will go to my supervisor and I will ask him, this is my observation and uh, I'm not satisfied ethically, morally or emotionally. So they will try to give you the answer and justification. If it does not still goes in your head and you are still confused then you will try a different level of hierarchy and if it does not work then you will go to a legal advisor that what is your position in this unethical situation and in extreme cases we can choose to resign from our job if we feel that the employer is really involved in unethical activities so this is what is the resolution procedure that an IMA member has to adopt. 
he says member of IMA shall behave ethically we should commit ourselves uh, for professional practice for that uh, as we just study we should be honest fair objective and have a responsibility membership should act in accordance with these principles and shall encourage others within the organization so it's not only we are following this one in fact we are encouraging others for following these standards also so a member's failures to comply with the following standard may result in disciplinary action means that ima can in start investigating on the conduct of uh, the ima member if there is a violation so now one by one we will read that i explain you already competency confidentiality each slide will explain everything he says maintain a professional expertise through knowledge experience expertise through research through education this is what is you have to do so you should have required knowledge and skills perform professional duties in accordance with law regulation and ethical standards or prevalent standards that has been given for example if we work in banking so there is a banking law and practices we should know banking law and practices that how to explain the investment how to deal with customers how to deal with money laundering this is all we should uh, you know, we should know the relevant laws and regulations provide decision support information and recommendation that are accurate clear concise and timely so uh, information should be accurate means we can rely on it should be clearly expressed concise means it should be condensed in an appropriate size neither too long and neither too short and timely means that it should be or it should come when it is required you know because any report will come after when the event will finish so that will not be having a significant relevance recognize and communicate professional limitations and other constraint that would preclude responsible judgment or a successful performance and activity so you should know your professional limitations if we are not capable to perform a certain task so we should report it to the the ones who are assigning this task in order to define our limitations of the profession okay then it moves to confidentiality it's our job to keep uh, things confidential for example now there are two things if some organization is doing so we don't need to wait for we have to report to the authorities one is if someone is involved in uh, terrorism financing so we don't need to wait here and there we have to inform the regulatory body and someone is involved in money laundering so these two are the one that we have to jump to tell to the regulators but other than that if uh, you if uh, until the court does not ask from us we will keep the things confidential about the client and the third thing is when the client is doing something which is not in the public interest means uh, they are mixing some chemical in the milk which is high, not hygienic for the Uh, users so this is what we have to come out and break the silence but in general all other confidentiality matters we have to keep it with us until the court does not uh, ask us to do for it right so this is what it says keep information confidential except it is the disclosure is authorized or legally required means client is happy to disclose right some people they will have a plastic surgery for example now clinic we would like to give them a feedback you know because they have a successful surgery this will help them to get new customers right so they will ask from the customer are you willing us to you know expose you that you have this treatment if a client say yes then go ahead you know right this is legally you have taken the permission and you can you know Uh, use as per the agreement and understand